Hey, how's it going? My name is Meg and today I'm reviewing my Lytra gear in comparison to the first generation Loom Cube. Doing a couple of tests around the house in terms of lighting for video and then maybe even some practical use during some weddings. I want to thank Lytra for sending this to me in order to review it and to use it in the field and to make a video on it. They did not pay me to do this. They just sent me one. So thank you. I really appreciate that. That's really fun. Uh, what came in the box was these two guys and this belt clip, which I don't know what I'm gonna use that for. But um, this is like a, a protecting case kind of thing. And I think just to, I don't think it's really gonna protect much. It's kind of flimsy. Um, anyway, the body of the Lytra torch is actually really built very sturdily. But I think this is more of like uh, to protect your hands of when, when the Lytra torch does heat up after a couple of minutes of using it. So I've been having this thing on for a good solid, maybe like 15 minutes okay this thing is really cool i really like this thing so their claim was no hot spots um, in terms of using it on video hot spots you know on the face or stuff like that as compared to my loom cube which is just lighting up my background right here trying to create some separation from the subject in the background um totally agree <laughs> this does actually really look good and i'm gonna actually do some tests as we get into it. Um, but I like this thing. I really, really like it. I think it would be kind of cool to have sort of um, like an attachment on a string or something like that because it can fall off. Oh, <laughs> Which that would be kind of annoying and then like maybe somebody accidentally steps on it or something. But it is really nicely made. I like this thing a lot. This thing, I haven't put it on yet. Maybe will later. Um, it's not really a big deal to me. What also came in the package, but I don't think it does come with it, is they gave me this cool little stand so I could put the light on here and then maybe play with it, you know, in terms of shooting detail shots or if I, say if I wanted to take a picture of this centerpiece, right, I could actually light it up from behind and do something like that. That would be kind of cool if I was just shooting by myself and I didn't have a, I didn't have assistant to help me. And then they also gave me this, which is like a smartphone holder. It may be able to fit my plus. Yeah, I'm gonna hold it right here. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, thanks for this iPhone thingy. I don't know. Oh, it just got dim. I think it's gonna lose some power now. It also came with like a GoPro attachment. Uh, so if you already have a GoPro and you have some accessories that came with that. Yeah, so let's take a look-see and get into some real footage using it, uh, setting it up and all that jazz. It's pretty good. You get that hair light a little brighter, but yeah, it's not bad. Still having a pretty soft hair. I would need to fill it with another light. This uh, Lytra is getting quite warm to the touch, but I knew it was gonna be messing with it a little bit. Every time I look at it, I get a little blinded. All right, how's that? I'm in like, there's light spilling from over there. There's light spilling in the back there, so it's not completely black, but I can do here. It doesn't look, it doesn't look bad. You know, that the diffuser looks really nice. Definitely really nice on the, on the skin. I'm not, I don't see any hot spots at this. I mean, my eyes are not that good to see. I'm looking in the viewfinder, but it doesn't, it looks pretty good. So it's creating some nice definition here, which is good for my round face. Um, in terms of creating definition, you know, sculpting with light and stuff. And if I move it here, that's an even more dramatic look. I like this look, actually. This could be pretty cool for monologue interview or something like that. I like this sort of hard line into here. That's cool, I like that. And then if I turtle my, my head forward a little bit, I can even position this camera. It's so hard. There you go. <laughs> it only took me forever. I don't shoot with a lot of um, lighting. Um, just because it's it's always like okay now I don't need just one tripod for my camera I need tripods for my lights so it's always a little bit more of a hassle and that's why if like you're um, uh, somebody who makes videos on the regular which 
I do and I just never do it, but it's to set up a little studio for yourself. The problem is, is like, it looks so ugly to me when I'm not using it. It's like, I don't wanna see light stands everywhere. I mean, basically it's just a two light setup. So I have a backlight here so I can just separate myself from the backdrop. You can see some of that stuff there in the background, but see, I'll show you the difference. You turn this guy off. So I've got the loom cube in the back. So see, it's not as clear and defined here um, compared to the other shot. And uh, I'll run some side-by-side -side footage at this point so you can kind of see. And so it's, it's like whatever. And I have to, this, the loom cube has like 10 stops in terms of brightness. That's like on eight or something. If it was darker, I think it would give me a much stronger. And if I had the proper sized, um, tripod to get it behind my head I can get a nice rim light see let's see if I can hold it see that see that so that would give me some really nice separation I don't have an extra a third tripod lying around I could really jimmy it where I'm like sitting on the ground because I have a gorilla pod here but I decided to have the Lytra torch the Lytra the boom and the Lytra you guys because of the diffuser and so you see it's a really nice soft even lighting uh, for video's sake. Um, I could see this being really nice for photos as well as a, as a trigger light. So how we use it in our workflow um, when we're in the field and we shoot weddings is that we'll have one of these lights on say a monopod or something where an assistant can hold it and the photographer can direct that person. Or you can use it by yourself if you have a, a posable head. Not a grand shot or a wide shot or anything like that. You'd have to shoot pretty tight because you didn't want to, you know, if you're by yourself, you wouldn't want to include the, the light stand in your shot. So that's how we would be using it as a, as a sort of um, nice off-camera lighting, constant lighting um, versus flash. It's really easy to, to set up. And if you have like your uh, second shooter or somebody who can just hold it for you, it's a really nice, it's a really nice way to use that. Otherwise, I'll be using this for video. We, I do all the behind the scenes video marketing for our teams. So I'll be having this like out on the dance floor and I don't have to have it, you know, in their face. I can sort of do the thing where it's kind of overhead, but mostly what I imagine we'll be using it for is um, at the nighttime. And then for me, when I'm doing videos and I want to give it a little bit more dramatic professional lighting, um, because I don't have a fancy lens for my, um, my G85. So often, you know, you'll have to do tricks like this with lighting to kind of um, really mimic a wide open lens. Cause I can only go to 3.5 on this, on this kit lens. And so that's, that's kind of like my next purchase, but I'm not really in a rush to do that. Um, it's just, you know, little things. So I really like it. Actually, I'm very um, surprised. It's getting pretty hot now. <laughs> I charged it overnight, so I'm not really sure how long it took to get to full power, but I'll tell you this, it had power within, it has to be fairly close to you. I'd say if you're, if you're trying to light yourself properly for video and stuff, <laughs> this thing is so blinding sometimes. I, I can't help but look at it. It does warn you like not to look in directly into the light and you will get retina damage. I'm already starting to feel a little, but as long as you keep your eye on the lens, it's pretty cool. It's, it's like right here. So it's water resistant. I wouldn't call anything waterproof. That's a, that's a very bold claim. It's water resistant. I haven't tried that yet. I don't think I'll be using it in that capacity, um, but it's nice to know like if something accidentally spills on it or your water bottle spills on your bag and maybe it drops into the, into the bag. So you've got all these weather sealed lenses that you already have in your kit and your body is usually weather sealed if you're professionally working. So that's nice, that's nice to know. And you have a nice little trigger light. It used to be we had to carry this big five, you know, big panel LED thing and carry that thing around. It was all wonky and weird. When I think you can get kind of the same thing from this. Also, if you're doing like table shots and stuff like that, it's a lot lighter to hold. I will be trying it in the field and uh, doing some, some footage of that as well. Oh, something died. Something's gone down. This thing is losing power, I think. Ooh, it's getting really hot. See for yourself, I like this dramatic little lighting. You can do kind of like something like this where it's, uh, 
it's basically 45 degree angle from me and then right here where it's like a more fuller fill that's losing power i've had this on just like constantly i haven't been like consciously turning it off i think it's on it's on its fourth stop and i'm about mm, 15 inches from it at this point um, I, I suppose I suppose it's going to cut out pretty soon. You can move it forward for a more uh, you know butterfly lighting effect or something. You still get some nice definition here. If you have two of these, then definitely you would have a proper three light setup. So I keep looking at the view, viewfinder. I'm just I'm looking at you know what the light is doing to my face in terms of lighting. And if I just lift my hat a little bit. You know, you can definitely raise it above and do a proper butterfly lighting with this. It's doing a really good job, I think. Um, and then just kind of correct it in camera or in post in terms of uh, temperature. It's balanced to daylight. So what is that, 50, 57, 5700 or something? So, but I kind of like this. I mean, I might as well go for it, this dramatic look. Let's see how close I can get. You see my light source right here, it's spilling in. Boop, boop. So I really like it. Um, I'm gonna let you guys kind of see the just the results of what it looks like for yourself. Um, thank you, Lytra, for sending this to me. Now I just gotta wait for uh, the other, the newer Loom Cube to release, and I can come do a comparison of all three of them together. So first generation Loom Cube and second generation Loom Cube. If that's what it actually is compared to this Lytra. Um, this Lytra, I like it. It is what they say, no hot spots. With the help of this um, diffuser, the diffuser bubble. It's a bubble. So obviously you can use this for util utilitary purposes, like you're in your garage, in your workshop, working on your car, or you're going camping. So there's all those features as well. You know, pop it on your bike or something. What well, would be a cool little add-on, because I think it's an easy thing to add on, is put some barn doors. Put some barn doors on it. Like we have our huge like Ari light. It has barn doors so you can you can flood the light or you can pin the light. So I think that would be really cool to be able to pin, especially if I want to do stuff like this, if I want to pin it to my head and it's not spilling all over it. I think that would be pretty cool to have. And it's such an easy, I think, I think it's easy. I'm not a manufacturer. I think it would be kind of easy to put, you know, little barn doors on here or or something like that that could help, you know, pin the light. That would be kind of cool. That was my review. Uh, first impressions so far. Thank you again, Lytra Torch. I appreciate it. Maybe get back to me on the, my barn, barn door idea, huh? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. This will be really cool, like say, you wanna shoot a really nice interview for a client. You're on the spot. You're not really set up with the proper equipment. You're not in the studio. It's kind of a run and gun situation. This is cool.